Hello and welcome to Knitting on the Float. My name is Tracy and I'm your host. I am coming to you from a gorgeous day in the Vancouver area. The sun is shining. It is beautiful outside. We have come up from downstairs up to the loft because in the loft right now, even though there are a few little bits of sunshine hitting, it's a little bit easier to share the projects that I'm going to be chattering away about today than it is on our usual spot on the couch, which right now is having those full sharp sun rays. So, and also we spent the last month getting this place neat and tidy. Let's enjoy it because it is a beautiful space to be in. It has been a couple of weeks since we visited last, and this week I have several projects to share with you. I have a brown paper package. I've got some footage from the river. It's a chock-a-block full episode, but before we get to all of that stuff, let me tell you where you can find me. I am Tracy RR on Ravelry, and I am at Knitting on the Float on Instagram. And if you ever care to drop me a line, either Ravelry, Instagram, or in the comment section, I always love hearing from you. If this is your first time visiting with us, welcome. This is a podcast where I mostly talk about knitting, although I have to admit in the past couple of days, in the back of my head, I have been dreaming about doing a little bit of crochet and a little bit of cross stitch. So I just need to transfer those thoughts into my fingers and hopefully in the weeks ahead, maybe we'll have a little bit more than knitting on, usually it's the couch, but today it's on the chair beside me. So welcome, and I hope that you enjoy the podcast. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. We are definitely in a new space, and it's gonna take me a little bit of getting used to. My tea is over here today. My bags are on the chair beside me. I'm sitting on the spinning stool. I have a brown paper package on the sewing table. Reorientation is lots and lots of fun. But I know you are ready to take some time for yourself. Maybe you are super, super hot and you found a nice cool space to sit and watch the podcast while you, you enjoy a nice cool beverage. So you've got that beverage, whatever, hot, cold, you have your project of choice and you've got your comfy space to sit down for a little while and take that time for yourself. And I am happy to be visiting with you again today. So welcome back. It is now time for tea time and I'm feeling a little bit discombobulated. I've not been sleeping well the past few nights. I probably should be having a nice cold beverage right now but instead, I have made myself a nice hot cup of Marks and Spencer Extra Strong Tea, and it is in my lovely Haunted Mansion wallpaper mug. Hurry back at the bottom. I am drinking hot tea because, as I mentioned, the past few days, I've not been sleeping all that well. The fridge has decided to go on the bum. And what I have to do is I have to pull it out every couple of hours, unplug it, plug it back in. Thankfully, my neighbor next door has taken all of our freezer goods. So on Tuesday, I believe it was Tuesday, yes it was, I went to the local scratch and dent outlet and we have purchased a new refrigerator, but it's not arriving until Saturday. And I'd gotten it working there for a little bit, but then last night it started acting up again. <sighs> so it's been one of those kind of weeks. Fridge is gone. Tasha's not been feeling too well either. So as I mentioned, I've not been sleeping all that well. So for me, it is hot tea. Although I do have some cold brew tea in the refrigerator that is all over the place. I should probably drink that soon get it out of the refrigerator as we've been slowly trying to clear out the refrigerator we're going to definitely have to throw the mayonnaise out <sighs> fun 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 things anyway i think for today this past week has been a bit of a curveball i'm going to say 
to keeping up with those little curveballs that sometimes get thrown at us and rocking it when we do. So cheers to that because I'm just going to be positive and say I'm going to rock it. I got a really great deal on the, the new fridge, by the way, so that was rocking it. Cheers to that. It has definitely started out to be one of those days. It took me a while to get the introduction recorded. And then when I did, I realized I didn't have the mic on properly. So <sighs> that's okay. It's on now. We will continue. It is now time for my favorite things. And I do have several projects that I am very excited to share with you. I've been working sporadically on them throughout the past little while. I've been a little bit low on my knitting mojo, which is sometimes very frustrating. I did mention I have been dreaming about doing some other things, some crochet, some cross stitch. Any guesses on the pattern I'd like to do for the cross stitch? Soon, very, very soon. I am dreaming of doing my dreaming of butterflies wrap, which is right here. And won't that create some lovely space in that cabinet once I do get to that project? All of those things in good time. For now, I'm just trying to take things day by day, figuring out what it is that I want to work on and finishing up those little loose ends of projects. Now, the first project I'm going to share with you, I cannot share much because it is a test knit. And I shared a little bit of this throughout May and in previous podcasts, we've chatted a little bit about this project. It is now done. It has been soaked. It has been blocked. It is beautiful. I have not done proper photographs yet, but it is living in this gorgeous bag. And there is only the project in here because I didn't want to be opening and that would have been scary. So what I did was I grabbed my lovely little yarn basket by Jewels of So Sweet Violet and I popped in the yarns that made up that project. And I thought I would share one last time before putting these in with all of my beautiful bits. And today I was sort of dreaming about what I might do with these beautiful bits. And right now I'm either thinking of, I'm. I've been wanting to start a crocheted blanket again. The one I started before I frogged, it was terrible. I'd like to maybe follow a proper pattern and do either a granny stripe, or I'm also thinking I would love to do another bits and bobs blanket. That's a knit one. And I absolutely love, love, love that pattern. So I wouldn't mind doing that. So I'm not sure whether this, this will turn into a crocheted project, but I think soon it will turn into something. Now, this project was held double with mohair, fluffy, fluffy mohair. I believe I used three skeins, or at least two and a half. And this is from Hedgerow Yarns. This is just an undyed mohair silk and the colorway naked because it's undyed. And oh, it was so lovely to hold double with all of these yarns. Now I also used, and I've got a little bit left, I had two skeins of Nora George Yarns BFL, and this was called Afterglow, and it was such a fun colorway to work with. It had all of the colors that I used in this project. And I just, oh, every time I'd hit one of the little color pops, it made my heart just dance, sing, jump all over the place. So, so beautiful. And so that was Nora George Yarns. And then I used Miss Babs and I will try to, so I used red and then I used orange because I used the rainbow colors. So red, orange. This is kind of a greeny yellow, but I used it as my yellow. And then I had this gorgeous green. The funny 
thing is I used about the same amount, but I think maybe this ball is wound a little bit tighter. It is much smaller, but I used about the same amount on with all of these colors, so I'm not sure what happened. From the green, I went into this teal color, which has a fluff on it. And then we went into this beautiful, beautiful blue. Isn't it lovely? Oh, I think this one was my favorite. And then <laughs> I'm dropping the yarns. I used this beautiful purple. And then I wound up my final skein. And I was not happy because, first of all, there was a split and it was a clean cut split in the yarn so I basically had two balls of yarn a small one and then a bigger one and then in this bigger one there is a fray so I was not impressed that my yummy two plies two ply toes my little minis were frayed now I think I had thought these were 20 gram balls but then it turns out they were 1.3 ounces, which is a little over 30 grams. I think it's not quite 40, but whatever 1.3 ounces works out to be. So these were actually bigger than a 20 gram mini, and I was surprised by that. I just assumed I had bought 20 gram minis because isn't that how most minis are? Sometimes there's 10 gram ones, but anyway, there was a lot of yarn with these colors and they were fun to work with along with the afterglow and the project that I have here that is blocked I cannot wait to share it with you when it is released but it will actually be a donation to the Hope and Sunshine Fund which is a fundraiser that Karina from Louie and Lola Yarns runs along with Thread and Maple and the Grocery Girls, and the money that they raise goes towards breast cancer research. So last year I donated my anthology throw, which was a beautiful pink. This year I am going to be donating the project that's in here, and I'm thinking of doing something else as well, but I've got to figure out the correct yarn in order to make that one happen. Anyway, that is done and it feels, it, it feels so good to have it off the needles. And I'm going to put these lovely little bits into my bags of yarn, just on the white bench there. This will go away to be used, held double with another project. But I think the minis I'd like to do either a bits and bobs or some sort of crochet blanket. But I think that'll be fun to start seeing those pops of colors in there. So to be determined and you will see what it is I get up to when I finally get there. The next project I'm going to share with you, it's been a while since we visited, it is not blocked yet. It is living in my gorgeous fireflies bag and right now is the season, at least in Ontario, for beautiful fireflies. There are no fireflies on the west coast and that makes me very sad. I have my second avenue wrap and while it is not blocked, all of the ends have now been secured. So that feels really good to have that all done. And this is such a gorgeous project. I used a kit from the Knitting Loft in Toronto and it came with, it's called um, Peonies, um, Blooming Peonies. I'll put it whatever the name of it. It's something Peonies. I absolutely love this shawl and I kept the color placement the exact same as the sample in the knitting loft and I just I loved it when I picked it up so thankfully lovely Vanessa sent me photographs so I was able to figure out which color went where and I'm really glad that I kept it as the sample in the knitting loft because I did question myself that you know maybe I should have used some of the variegated bits in this eyelet section but you know what I am just so thrilled 
with how it's turned out, I wouldn't change a thing. I did look at some of the other Ravelry projects using this kit and I am unhappy with the way I have knit mine. And now that the ends are secured, I just need to wait for Nathaniel to go on another sleepover or I think he's done his cadet things until later in the summer. <sighs> I'll figure out when I get to block this, but I probably won't need it until September, October. So there's definitely no need to block it yet. But when it is blocked, oh my goodness, is it not going to be absolutely glorious? Nathaniel did have a cadet weekend this past weekend, which is why this project got blocked and it was the priority project. This one, we're not wearing this in June, July or August. We're just not and probably not even into September. So it has a little bit of time, it just needs to be kept somewhere safe. I did say I was going to review the yarns. So I used, these are all plucky knitter yarns. And this one is golden delicious, just like an apple. And it is just a lovely, variegated yellows greens off whites and then this green here is called burlap and i'm trying to remember the name of the yarn i may have to i may have to pull this out um this is i'm trying to remember the base it is the Primo Fingering Base, that's right. And so it is nylon, cashmere, and merino yarn. This here is Peony, and it is lovely. Pink and green always makes my heart sing, makes me very happy. This one here, ooh, is Ogre, like Shrek. It didn't want to focus there, and oh, it's not quite, it's coming up a bit more yellow than green. It is an amazing color to work with. Just, I love it. And then this one here, this one is called Dreamy. And that's just because it absolutely is. It is, oh, such a beautiful, soft, soft pink. Think like ballet slippers and, oh. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Anyway, that is, I believe it was the Bouquet of Peonies kit from the Knitting Loft. And it's an exclusive kit to the Knitting Loft. And I think it turned out absolutely beautifully. And let's see, I'm hoping that the ogre is turning out a little bit more real to its color than when I held up just the ball of yarn. And I think it is actually, but oh, dreamy, dreamy bouquet of peonies and one day it will get blocked so that I can wear it because this is definitely something I am excited to wear next winter. We've had to turn the air conditioning on here so definitely not today. The next project I am going to share with you is living in my vintage fairy lights bag. This is a bag by Danny of Little Bobbins little bit of a light bulb on the back and this is my Christmas Eve cast on 2021 slash 2022 and the reason I call it that is because this is the 2021 sock and my 2022 sock is slowly but surely growing not by much but a little bit I've done I think another repeat i think maybe we were about here the last time we visited so i've done a tiny tiny bit and these are the feathering the nest socks the pattern by daniel george little bobbins and i absolutely love this pattern i've gone a little bit deeper in the color here because originally these started out as a completely different pattern they were supposed to be the be the light socks by alice jeffries but i decided instead of doing toe up as the pattern recommended that i would start from the top totally not taking into account how many stitches i would end off with and 
where I needed 60 stitches, I had 64. So I had to come up with another plan and it took me about a year to do it, but my feathering the nest socks are coming along well. I am using for my toe, this beautiful Christmas wreath sparkle skein from Louie and Lola Yarns. And that's a fun one to have on the toe. And then I pulled it out. I don't have much left. Somewhere it's here. Woo! This is just a, I think it might be a Nora George Yarns, but I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. And this is all I have left. So I used this just on that little rim at the top. So the main color right here is Nora George Yarns, and this one is called On Trial. And it's got those lovely little pops of yellow in there, and there are pops of unfocused green in there as well. So I think how they've turned out is quite fun. So as I mentioned, the mustard color up here, and as you saw, I didn't have much, so I love that little highlight. And then I've done the toe in green. And the feathering the nest pattern is just such a beautiful pattern to knit. It's fairly simple and it does take a little bit of concentration, but when they are knit up, they are beautiful. <sighs> I would love to get these done by the end of July, you know, with that whole Christmas in July. And then when I go into Christmas Eve cast on in December, I won't feel guilty like I did this year for not completing last year's and just sort of, you know, trying to be creative with the 2022. But I'm happy with how that did turn out. I do have to say, it is warm in the loft. It is whew, a little bit warm up here. I do have the air conditioning on, but it's not doing much right now. So I'm just a little bit warm up on the second floor. Okay, the next project that I'm going to share with you is in a lovely So Sweet Violet bag. This is my Celebrating Mice bag. And in here is my Shusui Shrug. And I am using gorgeous Viola yarns. This is Thistle on Merino Singles. And I am using this beautiful Hedgerow yarns. This is Glacier. And this is on Silky Singles, and together, oh, they are a dream. And it's been two weeks since we visited. I bet you're thinking I've done a whole lot on this project. I'm sorry to say, I haven't done as much as I would have liked. I think I've done a repeat and a half, maybe two repeats, but not much. I think I'm in the half section right now. And not that this takes a whole lot of brain work, but it does take a little bit. Anyway, this is my shoe sui shrug, and this is the right side. This is the wrong side, and it is brioche and garter stitch galore. It is absolutely beautiful, and I do love how these two colors are knitting up together. The Shoe Sweet Shrug is a pattern by Susanna Summer, and it is beautiful. It is brioche and garter. It's a nice knit, although it does take a little bit of my brain power to do. I am enjoying it, and I know that once I'm a little bit more focused, as I mentioned, a lot going on right now. Ugh. Once I'm more focused, I will definitely be spending some more time with this project, and I am looking forward to when I am doing that. And I'm really looking forward to being able to wear this in the fall, because this is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous garment. I have one more project to share with you, and it is living in my gorgeous bird leg bags flower nest basket. This is the Handmade Sock Society, season five, pattern three. And I'm hoping that I have, I think I've matched my bag fairly well with my yarn, we'll see. It's maybe not quite as crazy bright as my yarn. I am using some 
lovely Nora George yarn and Tracy of Nora George yarns is back dying again this one is called Fred and George this is the super sock are you ready this is as far as I'm concerned a perfect July colorway it is bright it is sunny it is filled with pops of color and bits of magic and it is definitely Fred and George. I am loving working with this. So I'm not sure whether it's orange or whether it's yellow. I think in many ways it leans a little bit more on the yellow side, but I'll call it orange because I much prefer knitting with orange than yellow. But those pops of color are just so, so amazing. I am in the foot of sock one. So I am just chugging along really nicely. I got the pattern, I want to say Monday. And right away, I knew I wanted something bright and fun. And this was the one I had in mind. But when I went up to the yarn stash to paw around, I saw a couple of other ones that would have been just as fun. And one was Expecto Patronum. Or is it Patronus? Expecto. Anyway, it was a beautiful blue with bright pops of neon. And then the other one was um, a pink with lots of bright neons in it. I can't, Honey Dukes, I think it was Honey Dukes. All Nora George colorways. But this is the one that won out and I'm loving how this pattern is knitting so far. As I mentioned, I am in the foot. I just got the pattern on Monday. It's now Thursday, so it is coming along really, really nicely. I'm hoping to get through the toe and maybe cast on sock two by the end of today or early tomorrow. And that will be a very, very good start to this project. And then once I get this done, then I will have lots and lots of crafting time because I think I, other than this one, I think that's the only test knit I have right now. So everything else is just for me so I can focus on those just for me projects and maybe dreaming of butterflies will pop into the mix. We shall see. The third pattern from the Handmade Sock Society Season 5 will be released on Thursday, July 6th, so about three weeks from now, and I am very, very excited for when I can share, with, share this with you. Anyway, that is what I got up to in the past couple of weeks, so a bit of this, a bit of that, a lot of this, and... Very soon, once I finish this project, and I don't think it's gonna take me too much longer really, the way I've been working away on it, I'm gonna have a lot of free time to work on, hopefully the Shoe Sweet Shrug. I'd love to cast on this. I have a special cross stitch that I'm also hoping to start. Oh, all the projects, I just wanna do them all, but <sighs> one by one. Just one by one, Tracy, that's all you need to do. Anyway, July 6th isn't too far away, and I will be very excited to share pattern three with you then. That is all of my favorite things for the past couple of weeks, and it feels like a lot, but that's a good thing. It's now time for brown paper packages and I got a wonderful, wonderful package this week. I ordered something from The Knitting PT, and that is Andrea Liu, and she is a physiotherapist that I am sure you have seen on Instagram. She has wonderful videos where she teaches us proper strategies and teaches us what we need to know in order to craft in the best possible way for our bodies. So, you know, loosening our shoulders, working our hands properly. And she also has some wonderful things in her shop. So I purchased a couple of those things. And one of the things I've had my eye on since last summer, but did not 
quite bite the bullet but finally did was one of her massage balls and I just have to see which way is which I think I think it's this way she's got the knitting PT in the ball itself so um, a really nice hard ball and I tend to get a lot of pain right between my shoulder blade and my spine and this is great for getting those knots out so I don't know I might just hang out here a little bit more but um, when she originally came out with these massage balls there were blue pink and then white balls I think the only ones left in the shop or at least when I purchased were the white ones and I'm glad I got that so that's the one thing that was in my parcel but the thing that mainly caught my attention was the wrist care kit and the wrist care kit comes with a wrist brace and when I was expecting Isaac I was doing a lot of crochet a lot of cross stitch and any knitting that I tried doing I was a thrower at that point um, I would get really bad carpal tunnel up my arms and two things to help with that was I had to ease off but I did change my knitting style from English style or throwing to continental knitting that helped enormously but I also know I need to take care of my wrist so I did get the brace as part of this kit and then you saw this size here there are two balls that come in the wrist care kit and they are a little bit smaller and a little bit lost at the bottom of the bag. I will find them though. And so here is the massage size ball. Then there is a medium size and a small. So these two come with the wrist care kit and they are great for getting those little knots out of your hands so that you can work those fingers longer and craft a little bit longer and take care of your hands so very very good and they're they're quite you know they're rubber balls but they they don't have a lot of give to them so i did get the pink ones and with my white one i now have three sizes there which will hopefully be very helpful for my crafting and posture and all those different things and the other thing that came with the wrist care kit, and I love these, are these putties. And this is extra soft, and this is soft. And I've started off with the extra soft, and the great thing about these is they just mold back into the container, and you just pull them out, and you, it's like Play-Doh, but they don't leave dies on your hands and really good thing just to work through your hands and gets in between those fingers as well so you're able to really um, get yourself all unknotted I guess is the, the best way to describe that and I have had this before in my office in Toronto I had some of this um, but I didn't really touch it too much because other people used it but it's nice to have my own and other people in this house are not going to use this the great thing about this when I put this back in put the lid on it will melt and form right back if I accidentally turn it this way um, it sort of melts back into the container and makes it look like it has never been touched this one I actually haven't used yet but um, it's fabulous, fabulous stuff. So I happily purchased the wrist care kit and I'm hiding it from everybody because it is just mine. I don't want anybody to touch my putty. And then again, we've got the little, the little balls. It's nice to have the three sizes as well. And this will be very, very helpful for me, especially if my wrists do tend to get a little bit sore as they sometimes do when you craft a lot anyway that was my brown paper package and i think definitely well worth the splurge and i will keep that down by the knitting table so something 
kind of good for me to come into the house and will hopefully um, keep my fingers agile and moving a little bit more, keep them in tip top shape so I can craft away. It's now time for Bits and Bobs and this is my segment where I talk about anything and everything not necessarily knitting related. And I have to start off by saying it has been challenging to get back to a regular podcasting routine today because Nathaniel came home for lunch, Isaac's been in and out. I'm finally alone in the house. I did spend a little bit of time with this lovely project while I was waiting for everybody to sort of vamoosh out of my way. And I forgot to, I had mentioned that I thought my bag matched my yarn, but isn't that just a perfect and fun combination? So I have been spending a little bit more time on the foot of sock three while I have been waiting. I also did a little bit of the wrist movement with my wrist care kit and I tried the pink putty. It is definitely a lot harder than the yellow putty. Ha! <sighs> what has been happening in the past couple of weeks? Well, certainly some knitting. I've been having a little bit of a challenge just sort of getting in gear with a lot of my knitting. Sometimes my brain isn't quite fully engaged in the knitting process and I find that very challenging but little bits here and there I try to pick up the needles each day as I can and work away so that's been happening and as I mentioned earlier Nathaniel is in the last couple of weeks of school so he's been going on field trips tomorrow he has the dinner and dance for the grade eight I don't know if it's so much a graduation, but a, a moving on ceremony. They'll have a moving on ceremony at the end of June. They're going to have a moving on dinner dance tomorrow night. So they get to all dress up and enjoy some time out. Scout, come on up. Oh, Scout wants outside right now. Some things never change. Oh, I thought I was alone in the house. Not quite. I will be right back. Of course, no sooner had I let her out, she wanted back in again. Now she's come upstairs and she's lying over by the linen closet, the sewing cupboard area, and she's having a nice relaxation. It has definitely been a very, very busy day. I did, while I was downstairs with the dog, check that the fridge is still working. At the moment, it currently is. The new fridge will be delivered on Saturday, which at this point is not soon enough, but we'll be okay. We're just slowly working our way through the food that is there and just making sure it is kept in a healthy condition. I was using the milk, the cream, the butter, all those things I've been baking with them just to make sure they are used and not going to waste. I have some frozen blue blueberries in the freezer that I need to put with the yogurt and enjoy that. So crossing fingers, we can kind of keep what's been happening going until the new fridge comes on Saturday. My neighbor has our frozen goods. So I'll pick those up Sunday once the fridge has, the new fridge has taken its time to cool down. But um, scratch and dent. We don't care that it's got a scratch and dent. Actually, it's not even that this, it is dented in the back, but it's missing two shelves. So I saved quite a bit of money. And half the time I pull the shelf out anyway, cause I find they have too many shelves. So hopefully this new, and I can always order one if I want. So hopefully the new fridge, once it arrives, will keep everything cold and frozen. We were debating getting a side-by-side -side or the French door. We were leaning towards the side-by-side -side cause it was quite nice and that one had more of a dent on it than missing shelves but we ended up going with the French door fridge again and uh, it should look good down there. Oh, what else has been happening? We last summer when we moved here my parents were going to bring out Nathaniel's kayak but they decided to keep the kayak in Ontario and 
we ended up getting him a paddleboard instead. And Isaac was in Florida, down in Disney working. So we didn't get a second paddleboard. We only had the one for Nathaniel. So this past week, we did get a second paddleboard. It's exactly the same as Nathaniel's. And the two of them were out in the river the other day having so much fun. And it was a bit of a cooler day. Today's a little nicer. So they're planning, I think, after school today, once Nathaniel's home, to play in the water. And it was really quite funny where you could often see the goose prints in the mud flats. You could actually see the boys' footprints in the mud flats from them playing in the water the other day. So I've got some footage of that and that's fun to see. And I also have some footage of the geese going to war the other day. So I'll put those two clips right here. It is Monday, June 12th, and we seem to have some goose wars going on here. And there are several geese just over in front of a house, a couple doors down. And if you notice on the raft at my neighbor's house, Mama Duck is up on the dock, and there is a baby swimming just in the water, and then there's another baby on the log. And if I turn around, I'm gonna try and do it fairly slowly or maybe I'll just actually clip over. There are a bunch of geese behind me so I'm going to turn quickly and cut. So behind me here, I've just turned around, there are several geese here and they're all grown-up ones and then there is a whole other gaggle behind in addition to the ones that are in front of my neighbor's house. So I'm not sure what's happening with all the geese today but we seem to be having quite a few coming up by the houses today, the houses, and there are quite a few also across the river as well, but a few moments ago there was a fight happening a couple doors down. I have not seen the two geese with the 30 goslings in, well, since I visited with you last, so not since either, I think that was the beginning of June, June 1st. But anyway, just saw these guys and thought I need to grab the camera and have a little bit of a share for the next podcast, which is only a few more days away. Happy news while I watch the geese go by. I received the pattern for the Handmade Sock Society number three. You can tell that they were having a fight there. There are a couple of feathers floating in the water just over there. Anyway, I received the pattern for number three of the Handmade Sock Society today. I have chosen my yarn. I'm very, very excited to share that with you. Although probably by the time you see this roll, I'll have already done that. So it is a happy Monday. And even with all these Canada geese going by, and all the chaos that they are now creating, I think it's going to be a good day. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, and Nathaniel is pumping up the paddleboard that he got last year. And how's it going? Almost finished. Almost finished. You're going to be so tired you won't be able to go into the water. And we have picked up another paddle board for Isaac so that the two boys can go together. Isaac has pumped his board up and he is just now putting on his swimwear so that he can go into the water. Get a piece of foam, get that off. And this one needs to put on his swimsuit so he can go in with the quack, 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 quack Duck. ducks. Duck, 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 duck. Good. Good. Duck. Are you excited to try paddle boarding, Isaac? There's a lot here? more space here. So Isaac is on his inaugural paddle board vo voyage. No, maiden. This is maiden voyage. And Nathaniel has done this last year with his board, so. Yeah, don't get too close to that. Yeah, the ducks might attack you. No, do not attack me, ducks. 
Okay, what do I do now? <laughs> Wait. He's just strapping himself. I guess oh. you can't get under the bridge. Yeah, they if they're well, if I they're can if they can this. because they're no no you'll be fine. Well, you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. Don't bang into each other. <laughs> what do you think, Isaac? You like it? I'm soaked, but it's fine. Boom! <laughs> yeah, don't don't knock Isaac no, over. To he's gonna be warmer than you in the water because he's got the wet suit. Nathaniel is being brave and has gone for the standing position. It's been a year since you've been on the board, and you're doing okay. For now. I missed it! Nathaniel and Isaac had a bit of a collision, and Nathaniel ended up in the water. <laughs> Wait a second. We have these boats beside each other. Are you on? That's love. Risking... Risking falling in and becoming a river rat, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to fall in. It's not that bad, actually, once you get in. It's cold, I put my hands in there. Sometimes I'm not sure which one's 13. Both boys have fallen in the water now and they're just having fun playing. So Nathaniel's pretending he's surfing. He's been doing some planking. What else have you done on your board? You've been doing push-ups? Squats. Squats? <laughs> I love the look on the, oh, I'm going to fall, but I didn't fall. Having fun? Yeah. yeah? And you thought it would be boring in this little section. And it looks like you've adapted well. Ah, oh, the sun's coming out. Are you going to stand up for us? Uh, no, I'd no? die. <laughs> you wouldn't die, you'll just get wet. Nathaniel is going to hit me. As I mentioned, I'm not sure which one's 13. I'm not quite sure what has happened to that family of 30 goslings. They haven't been spotted since I think the last time we met, which was June 1st. I think I went out and we got them on the video. I haven't seen them since, so not on our side of the river. And the only geese I've seen on the other side through the binoculars are more adult geese, so I'm not sure. I'm sure they are fine, I just haven't seen them. And Bendy's been around a couple of times, but for the most part it has been fairly quiet on the river. The little duck that has the three little, go uh, the three little ducklings, not goslings, ducklings they are getting so big now the three are still around and it was either last night or this morning I saw them 
and they are starting to look a little bit more like ducks and less like ducklings each day. They are still a little bit fluffy, but you can start seeing the patterning and they are getting so, so big and they're just, they're still cute. The male mallards, however, oh, they're, they're looking terrible. They're starting to molt and they're losing their color. They look really worse for wear, they really do. But those are the changes that happen around the river. Anyway, I don't think there's anything else that's happening on Bits and Bobs. The main thing is our refrigerator. You know, is your refrigerator running? Yeah, I better go catch it and replace it with a new one. Um, I have been very much enjoying this project and I am hoping to have it done in the next few days and then that will give me a chance to focus on maybe casting on something new, maybe stitching up something new, just adding something new to the roster, but it was definitely fun getting this cast on earlier this week and it's going by so quickly. It's a lovely little knit and I'll be very excited to share that with you. I'm not sure if we will meet the last week of June or whether I will wait until July 6th. I am trying to take a little bit more time off in the summer and after today, it's been so hard doing the podcast with everybody coming in and going out that I think that might be a better way to do the summers. So it'll either be a two week or a three week break. We shall see, see what knitting I get up to in the next two weeks and I'll call it then. So I'll either see you the last week of June or that first week of July on the Thursday. And if it's the first week of July, you're going to get a reveal, which will be very exciting. Anyway, that is all I have for Bits and Bobs. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that wherever you are, you've had a chance to rest, rejuvenate, perhaps cool down a little bit and that you've been enjoying your project of choice. Maybe you've been working on the feather vein socks. Maybe you are dreaming and trying to imagine what sock pattern three will look like. <sighs> summer vibes, I tell you, summer vibes. I am looking forward to visiting with you in either two, maybe three more weeks when I will share with you what crafting I've gotten up to maybe some new projects, we shall see. And I am wishing you a wonderful couple of weeks ahead. Bye. I have popped all of my wonderful little bits from my mystery project into this Ziploc bag. And looking at these colors, I am really dreaming of knitting up a blanket. And I can't decide whether it should be crochet or knit. I did love knitting the Bits and Bobs blanket, but a crochet blanket has been something I've been wanting to retry. So I don't know, but I am loving this little bright bag of yarn. And hopefully soon, maybe we will see some of these baskets start to get a little bit lower in yarn goals. I have so, so many goals. <laughs>